Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about tools for systematic review automation. So my name is Kayla Robinson. I am one of the health sciences librarians here at the Medical Center Library. So it's nice to meet you all. Thank you for being here. Um, we're also going to be having Lauren Robinson, who is another health sciences liaison presenting the last half of this session as well. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> So to begin, here's the agenda for today. We're going to be talking about a few, three main tools. Um, the first being the SR Accelerator tool, which has a few different kind of sub tools underneath. We'll be talking about EndNote and Rayon. We'll be doing this kind of in order of how you would conduct a systematic review as well. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat or stop us and we'll be sure to answer them if you need further clarification. So first things first, we're going to talk about SR Accelerator and the fabulous tool that it is. So SR Accelerator, and you all can read this a little bit more on your own time if you'd like, but it's kind of a suite of tools like the Microsoft apps. So you could do different things for different aspects of the systematic review. And yeah, it's modular, it can be incorporated into workflows and combined with other tools, which is what we're going to show you today. Here is the homepage of SR Accelerator. Our fantastic graduate assistant has dropped the link in the chat. So this is the homepage and I have a few things highlighted. Um, on the left hand side, we have the three tools that we're going to be discussing today. And on the top right hand corner, we have the login information. So when you get onto the SR Accelerator website, if you click there, it will ask you to register for an account. And you do have to register for an account before you can use any of the tools here. It looks like this on the left hand side. And we have the link to the SR Accelerator on this PowerPoint as well. All right. Now we're going to move right on into the first kind of sub tool in the SR Accelerator suite, and it's called the Polyglot Search. A common theme here is that we did not get to name these things, so I think they kind of have interesting names. The Polyglot Search is key to a systematic review because it allows you to easily translate your searches between databases. I've gone ahead and thrown in just a very basic search into this query box. Typically, we start with PubMed, so we put the PubMed um, search in there and then let it populate on its own. So underneath, you have a ton of databases, like Obviously, um, Ovid Medline, Cochrane Library, and CINAHL is on there as well as Web of Science. So if you're translating to any of those databases, it has the, um, the translation link right there. And I'm actually going to show you all live. So here's the login page. I just have to put in my information and here's the polyglot search. So there was an old search that I did. But if we pull up this PubMed search, which is the same one in the slides, and copy and paste it here, if you scroll underneath, it will show you the translations to other databases. And quick note, um, if you're familiar with MeSH terms, these are subject heading. I'm not going to go into that super detail today. But if you use MeSH terms or any kind of what we call subject heading or controlled vocabulary, when you're translating, you have got to make sure that it matches in the other databases. Additionally, um, this plus sign is automatic explosion, which is something to do with MeSH. If the plus sign is still there in your other database, you would want to move it inside the parentheses. So just a few syntax errors are going to occur with every translation, which is why, unless you're pretty familiar with a database, we would highly, highly recommend combing through this to make sure everything's right. 
And as always, if you have any questions or you need help with this, you can just call your librarians. We will be sure to help you kind of correct or fix any problems that you're having. Okay, so that is um, current slide. That is the polyglot search. Once you have kind of that fixed, completed, translated search, you can just copy and paste those into the other databases and pull those results, which is the next thing we're going to talk about pulling results into EndNote. So a few of the librarians here have kind of designed an EndNote template for systematic reviews that just kind of streamline the process. I'm going to just go ahead and get out of here, but we do have a screenshot of what that could look like right here. So as you're exporting your references from the databases into EndNote, we always recommend that you sort them into um, into database kind of groups to ensure that you have the proper number of results in every database and that things are kind of just good to go. I have an EndNote library here. This one is empty because I deleted all of the results for some reason. So I'm gonna go back and add some more really quick. You don't know how to import results from PubMed and to end up, we're gonna to learn today really fast. I'm gonna just get the first five of these. Maybe I'll just do the whole page. I'm slow today. So you hit send to citation manager, all results on this page. We do not want all 200,000 results. That, would, that wouldn't work, but we downloaded it. We're gonna click it down here and it's gonna open into EndNote. So I would name this group PubMed. And then if I use CINAHL, I would just have this one here as well. I would take all of my unfiled results and I would highlight them all, right click, add references to PubMed. So if you only had 200 results in PubMed, this would be great. Um, that's not super likely in a systematic review, but for the purposes of what we're doing today, we're just gonna leave it at that. Okay, and this EndNote is pretty straightforward. You always wanna make sure that you're naming your libraries things that make sense and anyone could look at and would be able to identify. So I would call this library with all of my references that I pulled from my systematic search in all of my databases, I would call this something project name master and the library, just so I knew that this is the library I didn't want to edit when I was, you know, kind of proceeding in the steps of a systematic review. And the next step of that is the deduplicator. Whenever you're doing a systematic review, you of course have to search at least two, typically more than two, but at least two databases. And because you're trying to get that translated search as close in each database as possible, you are guaranteed to have at least a few duplicates in your library. Systematic Review Accelerator has a very good tool that, and I'm actually going to close this out because it leaves them open, has a very good tool that allows you to deduplicate the library to ensure that you don't have any duplicates when you begin your title abstract screening later down the line. However, <laughs> putting your EndNote library into this isn't super straightforward, unfortunately. You kind of have to do some like enabling to get it to work. We have the steps here. This is obviously what it looks like. And here is what you would do. So you have to convert your EndNote library to XML. And I'm gonna show you all how to do that. Um, Lauren has included screenshots of both a Mac and a, Win a Mac and a Windows computer. I'm obviously working on a Windows today, so we're gonna kind of do it like this, but we have it step-by-step. Step. So,
Okay. What you have to do first is all references. If for some reason you have it clicked on like one reference, it will just send that one reference. Which we obviously don't want to do. So make sure that you have it clicked on all references and so not like in a group. You're going to go to file, export. I'm going to just save this to my desktop. You want to convert it to XML. And it will say XML. So this is my Endo Library XML. Hit save. Kayla, you might have just exported one article. I think I did. I wouldn't be surprised if I did because I just said to avoid it. Let's see. Yep, one article. Okay, it's easy. It's so easy to just export one article that I do it on accident all the time. So let me reopen EndNote. All right. You can also use Command A or um, I think it's Control A on a PC to go and just select everything in the all references and that would be one workaround to not um, have that issue. Perfect. I'm terrible at keyboard commands, so thank you. It's good to know. All right, we're doing it again, just in case you didn't get it the first time. Doing it again. Okay, my note library, XML, saving to my desktop. When you're doing this, you definitely want to save to somewhere that makes sense to you. I'm just saving it to my desktop because I obviously don't need this later down the line. Save. Okay, here it is. And we can actually, you can always check to see. So yeah, here's all of these. Um, definitely looks a little bit different than what it did when I just exported one. We're gonna open this back up, go back to our thing. It browse desktop, my endo library XML. You'll know that you did this the right way if it if the box highlights green. So before it was red, but now that it has a file that works, it'll highlight green. We're gonna upload it. And here we go. So the way that this works is obviously, since I only exported from one database, we're not going to have any duplicates. That's just, that's not how it's going to work. But if we did, there would be articles in these three. So the super quick check is extremely likely duplicates. So you don't have to spend a lot of time on them. The highly likely duplicates, you might want to just kind of read the authors, the title, the journal, just to see they're the same. Um, the thorough check are the likely duplicates, but that means that they may not actually be duplicates. So you always just want to make sure that you're, you know, not deleting something that isn't a duplicate. And then the things that aren't duplicates, you don't have to check. So that is how you would use this. I actually have one open if that would be helpful to show um, that has all of those areas. Would, would that be helpful, Kayla? Let me see. Yeah, I think it would because I don't have any one of these saved on my. So, yeah. I... so just working on this one this morning. So you can actually see um, these are all the extremely likely duplicates. You don't you just have to do a quick check like Kayla was saying. Um, here are the highly likely duplicates and then the likely. This is the one you want to go through all the different pages and make sure that um, you are um, not deduplicating something that you don't want to. The other, um, if you wanted to keep a different record, you can actually just say keep and just move between them. Um, usually the one with the short title like this is the um, PubMed or Medline um, export. Um, so sometimes we'll just keep that one because it usually is a very um, full record with the abstract and things, um, but you can keep any of them. All of them will work and that's what you'll do. And then um, you can also see all your non-duplicates. All right. Wow. Lauren, <laughs> that's actually it for me. So. Okay. Um, and I actually, let me go on and show you all. Um, so once you have these all deduplicated, 
you'll want to um, export them back into your EndNote. So um, I usually select the RIS file because that is the typical file you import from PubMed or CINAHL or whatever, uh, whatever other database you'd be using. Um, and then you can hit download. And then I would recommend creating a new EndNote library and importing that in. Um, I always recommend having multiple EndNote libraries for systematic reviews and other evidence syntheses because um, you can keep track of your numbers that you need to report in your Prisma flowchart. So your original library, like Kalo showed, would have those groups with all the different individual um, data, the individual databases um, and the number of results and citations exported. And then this one would have all your deduplicated ones. So that's how you do that. So, Kayla, do you mind sharing the slides for me? Not. Let me go ahead and do that again. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Rayon today. I'm just going to, um, can you hit the next slide, please? So what is Rayon? It is a collaboration tool for systematic reviews and ev evidence syntheses. It does some of the same things that SR Accelerator does. Um, I just... I like it a little bit better for some of the screening purposes. Um, it's freely available. There are paid options, but you can use it for free. I've only used it for free. So um, some of the benefits of it is that it allows for blinded review through title abstract. And then it also has a way to deal with um, resolutions of those conflicts um, after the blinding process. Um, it allows for sorting reasons for exclusion. So you, you can actually um, high, um, you can set keywords for um, both exclusion and inclusion, and it will highlight those words in red and green. So if it's a word, if you're only looking for RCTs or randomized controlled trials, you can add those keywords um, and those will highlight green. While um, if you don't want any reviews or systematic reviews or meta-analyses, you could put those as your exclusion criteria terms and it will highlight those red. So that can really help speed up the way you go through title abstract reveal. It also allows um, for the sorting. So, you, so in the new PRISMA guidelines, um, you actually have to report reasons for exclusion. Um, and Rayon allows that to be built in throughout the process. So you can actually create or use one of their already predetermined reasons for exclusion. So maybe it's a not, not in a language that you can read, or um, it is not a specific uh, trial type that you're interested in, things like that. Um, and you can set those or again, use the predefined ones. Um, there's also a general tutorial that Rayon has on the right. It's a, just a quick tutorial, um, and you can watch that as well for more intricate things. Okay, next slide, please. So um, this is kind of how, how you set up an account and you do your steps. You'll have to sign up for an account in order to use Rayon. It's a brief process. I usually use my institution email when I do this. That's what I usually, that's what I did and what I recommend. Um, and it's, then you'll get a confirmation email and then you can um, log in after that. So what are the steps um, when using Rayon? You'll wanna create a review. You wanna import your library from EndNote. You wanna set up your exclusion and inclusion keywords. You wanna set up your reasons for exclusion. You'll want to do the reviewing process. And once you've done the title abstract reviewing process, you'll wanna turn off the blinding and then um, have any conflict resolutions. So that's kind of the overarching thing of what you can do inside of Rayon. There are some other things. This is what I really like to use it for. Next slide, please. So how do you import into Rayon? So um, it's just kind of like what Kayla showed a moment ago. Um, you'll want, instead you'll want to export into an RIS um, format. So instead of XML, you'll use text only, and then you'll select RefMan RIS export, and you'll get a text file. So I actually will show you all how that works. Let me open up my EndNote here and get it going. Okay, this is a very small library, but... Okay, so if this was the, the library, of course, the systematic review, you're gonna have hundreds, if not thousands of articles that you're importing in, but um, just for, so it's quick and doesn't slow down the internet, we're gonna use this small one at 14 articles. You're gonna go up to file, 
Um, and then I'm on a Mac. So this kind of can show you how to do it on a Mac as well. And X, um, you're going to hit export. I'm actually going to have to share this other screen because it opens up a new box. Let me, let me just share my desktop so you can see what's going on here. Um, so then you will, I'm going to hit my desktop and then I'm going to hit text only. So again, on a Mac, that's where you would select the XML if you were doing it into the deduplicator and SR accelerator. And then you'll want to hit RefBand RIS export. If this is not defaulting, you can actually go here to select another and search for RefBand. And that is the EndNote version of an RIS. So that's how you would do that. I use it all the time. So it's in my already selected output. I'm going to hit save and save that to my desktop. And now I'm going to go to Rayon. I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in. And then here are my reviews. So you can see I'm working on one here, and then here's my test review. That's what we're going to go into. If you want to do a new review, it's really easy to do. You just fill out this information and hit create, and then you'll get this. So <clears throat> let me go here. I'm going to go to show. So this doesn't have anything in it. So now I'm going to upload that file. So I'm gonna hit select file. It's on my desktop. Here's the XML file, or sorry, that's the wrong one. The text file is the one we want. I'm gonna hit open. I'm gonna hit continue. And this is what, in, uh, what Rayon looks like. So over here is your maybe included and excluded. The blinding is default. It's gonna be on. And you can invite collaborators. Um, the creator, <laughs> excuse me, is the only one that can turn on and off the blinding. I do not recommend turning off the blinding until every collaborator is done with their title abstract review. That keeps it blinded throughout the entire process. But you can see where you're at up here. Um, here's all my total references. And then here are those included and exclusion parameters. Um, these are defaulted ones that Rayon just puts in here. You can edit them by just hitting delete. And you hit OK. Uh, you don't want control group and you can just delete them how you want. Here's a systematic review. I did want literature review. We can go like that. Um, let's say I wanted um, a new inclusion criteria. So since this, this is a med ed topic, I'm going to hit, I'm going to type student and I put that there. And now it tells me which four articles and it highlights them in green. Um, and so that's one of my inclusion terms. It's not going to be a definite for your inclusion. It's supposed to be like a visual cue to you when you're going through. Um, and your same thing with your exclusion terms. So I'm just going to use a random word here that I know is in there. If I do promoting, and that was one of my exclusion terms, here's two articles, and it's going to highlight in red. So that's the really powerful piece of Rayon during title abstract review. When you're looking at so much text data, um, it's really helpful. Um, so I'm going to hit clear and clear. So all of that stuff is gone. And now I'm seeing the entire library. Um, during your review, you can actually select on it. This is also available on a mobile device. So you can do it on a bus ride or um, wherever you might be. Um, and here is in include maybe and exclude. There are some keyboard features as well um, that you, you can use um, for quick inclusion and exclusion. Again, you can see which ones have the highlights. Um, and then you can read the abstract and then you can include, exclude. If I'm gonna include this one, Lauren included it. I'm gonna exclude this one, so forth and so on. Here are those reasons for exclusion. Um, this is again, really important for the new Prisma guidelines that launched last year. Um, so like, let's say I excluded this one, it was the wrong study design. Or if you wanted to add a new one, um, and so it does have foreign language. I don't, um, if you wanted just to add um, not topical, that's probably not a very good reason for exclu exclusion, but um, that would then be not topical. Um, so that's what's really helpful for Prisma. And those are the things I usually use Rayon for. And then I export everything from Rayon once I'm done with my inclusion exclusion and back into EndNote for full text review. And I do that because we actually have instructions on our EndNote guide that um, allows you to sync EndNote to our library collections. So you can get direct links and PDFs inside of EndNote and view that all inside of there. 
You can do that in Rayon, but since Rayon doesn't connect to our collections, EndNote is a better solution for productivity purposes. So that's Rayon. There's a lot more you can do. If you ever have questions, please feel free to reach out to the Med Center Library. We're happy to help with Rayon. It's a fairly new tool to all of us, um, but it, for this part of the blinding um, of, of systematic reviews and other evidence synthesis, it does really well. Okay. Can you add the slides, please? Okay. Um, <clears throat> So again, um, these slides are going to be on online. You'll be able to view them there. Um, and I do talk about all these things that I just spoke about in the slides um, with links and things. Um, so SpiderSight. SpiderSight is an X SR accelerator. It's another tool that I just highly recommend to people um, for hand searching and citation searching. So when you're doing a systematic review, you um, have gone through the title abstract review. You then have your full text review and you have your final included articles. What you have to do is go through the citations of those articles and do another title abstract review and then another full text review. Um, and you know it, it's a lot of it's a lot of manual work to do that. Spider Sight um, just launched recently, and it's part again, like I said, part of the SR Accelerator. Um, it actually will go one level deep back into your citations. You can upload your included article um, using that um, XML feature um, that Kayla showed earlier, and then get the article, the citations um, exported out to EndNote. So it's a really great way to automate hand searching, um, or it, or it might, you might know it as citation searching. Um, and it, so it's just a really great tool for that. Okay. I also want to put a little plug in. Um, I'm going to share my other screen here um for our research workshop series um you're attending them now thank you for coming we are going to be doing another one on data visualization and with voyant coming up um, and then we also have some next month um about um endnote as well as um elevate your research as well as tools for systematic review protocol development we're actually launching a brand new tool um, that will help you develop a protocol um, that you'll be able to put in osf or other registries um, and then we'll also be launching our brand new systematic review guide in that session at the end of april and then elevate your research is about research and publishing and your own metrics um, so please um, come out to some of those sessions as well and then we can take any questions you might have about any of these tools.